Hello, in this video, we will discuss the solution of the semester question on basic electrical of 2020-2024. Here in this question, we have here defined Ohm's law. So we can define that the current of the voltage is proportional to I and with some conditions. And between the copper and silver, which resistivity is less? Obviously silver, but the silver is costly. It cannot be used in copper is cheaper so copper is available so copper is used but the resistivity of silver is less uh, determine uh, while determining the Thevenin resistance the independent voltage and current source are replaced by obviously the independent voltage is having a zero resistance if zero resistance printed triple by short and the current source is replaced by uh, open circuit because the internal resistance of idle current source is infinity so it is open and this is short and write any two causes that forces the electron to flow inside the conductor so obviously we have two fields are there one is electric field another is a magnetic field so both the fields and um, forces the electron to flow inside the conductor electric field directly the current will flow magnetic field but we have to along with the magnetic field the conductor must move then the electron will flow inside the conductor right again the voltage is given given here and the current is given here the trick is that the voltage is given in terms of sign and the current is given in terms of cos so first convert the cos in terms of sign so if we convert in terms of sign, so this will be uh, this omega t minus 60 plus 90. So accordingly, the value of theta changes and we get uh, minus 10 here will be plus 30. So plus 30. Uh, so minus 10 minus of 30, that will be minus of 40. The current lags the voltage by minus 40. You can say the voltage leads the current by 40. So anyway, the answer, uh, answer the examiner want to ask how much degree the current lags uh, from the voltage. So that is why it is uh, minus of 40 is the answer. We can have uh, if the load is connected in star, find out the relation between the line voltage and the phase voltage. Obviously, root three times the line voltage increase. One coulomb is equal to that much. How much electron uh, and uh, 1 coulomb is obviously elect uh, 1 electron is equal to 1.6 in terms of minus 19 electron uh, coulomb so you can find the inverse of that you will get number of electron and the rate of change of charge is nothing but the current okay that's a current uh, define voltage voltage is nothing but it's like uh, energy uh, joules uh, divided by the coulomb uh, is charged like is total energy work done per for, for moving a coulomb one unit of uh, charge from the uh, separate one unit of charge how much energy is required that is the voltage so that is how we have to define it not like v is equal to ir that is not the voltage uh, that is just a formula for the voltage derived from this energy by charge because W by Q, one can write W in terms of um, like this is a V, so you can convert in terms of the current and R. Uh, that is by Ohm's law, right? Uh, Ohm will come into picture, that's why the V is proportional to I, and that is how we get V is, is equal to IR. But voltage is energy by per coulomb. <clears throat> energy required to separate one kilom one unit charge um, that is voltage what is the difference between a mcb and the fuse in the household the fuse you can uh, you need to replace it but mcb no need to replace it will auto trip and you need don't need to replace it uh, always but a fuse you have to replace it always uh, fuse is cheaper mcb is uh, costly and the fuse is also very important like if you want to do some work in the home then you must remove the fuse mcv you cannot rely on that so fuse you need to uh, use that similarly next you have the what is the difference between a mutual flux and the leakage flux uh, mutual flux is that 
Um, usually in transformer you have got two coils, primary and the secondary coils. The flux which link with both the primary and the secondary, uh, primary and the secondary, the flux which links with both, they are called the mutual flux. And the flux which just links with its own, like uh, here leakage flux that links with its own single coil, primary coil, its own flux linking with its own, that is the leakage flux. Superposition theorem that any circuit is given, you need uh, it need a linear and circuit. If it is a linear circuit, then uh, if it has contained the more than one source, so you have to replace it or current through any resistor is equal to the sum of the current due to the individual sources. Like in this example, suppose you want to find what is the current through 2 ohms, so it is we will find one because of this 7 ampere, another because of this 10 volt. So independently, when we talk about 7 ampere, then this has to be short circuit. When we talk about 10 volt, then this has to be open circuit. So in that way, you have to define superposition theorem. So here the Thevenin theorem is being asked and also the superposition theorem is asked to solve the, this particular problem. So we have solved these numericals here <coughs> in this circuit. So these are the short questions uh, that have been asked. Uh, Ohm's law and uh, resistivity here, what independent voltage and current source to be replaced with, then electrostatic, electromagnetic, then the how much degree it lacks, minus 40, then phase angle, it is magnitude is root three times of that and 30 degree lead. Then one kilo ohm is equal to 6.23 10 to the minus 10 to the 17 electrons, voltage is joules per charge and mutual flux, these terms, okay. So most important is here the Thevenin theorem. So we have, we have solved it. So Thevenin theorem obviously, uh, first this is a load. So replace the load with A and B and this circuit is very simple because the current source is there and this current will only flow in this direction because this side is open. You cannot have this current flow in this direction. So only the current will flow in this direction. So the sign is appropriately given. The voltage across sign across the voltage is independent and the sign across the resistance depend on the direction of the current. So what is VAB? So you move from A to B first sign if you take the first sign is negative over here, then the positive over here, then negative and the positive sign you have taken. Just add these two, minus of 25. Then for RAB, we replace the current source with open and the voltage source with short. And then if you move like this, you have got only 5 ohm register. So the RAB is 5, VAB is minus 25. The current in this direction is obviously negative. But our question is what is the current direct going upward? So this is obviously the positive 25 by 7. Let's see by using superposition theorem, are we getting the same answer or not? Superposition theorem, we have to redraw the same circuit twice because there are two voltage sources. Once when we do, we have got the current source which is open. So only the current which will flow is like this. So the current is very simple because there's three elements only there. So that is minus 10 by 7. Again, here we have the current source, but this current is divided into two uh, line, uh, two path. So we have to use a current division rule, the opposite resistance divided by some of the resistance. The opposite resistance divided by some of the resistance, totaled by what is the input current, that is seven. So here we have got a five ampere, just to add these two current, you get 25 by seven. So the, our answer matches with the procedure with the Thevenin theorem also. So this is the correct, 25 by seven is the answer. Next we have finding this by KCL, KVL. This is again a very simple problem because there's a current source, there is no other current will flow in this path. So this current will flow here. The current can't flow in this direction because this is open circuit. So the only current which is flowing like this, according to the direction of the current, the symbol of plus and minus are mentioned here. Here there is no need of sign plus and minus because no current is flowing. Here we have the plus and minus independent. What is asked? What is VAB is asked? So let's move from A to B. First sign is plus here, then plus here. Then you have a plus and plus two sign over here. Answer is 50 volts is the answer. Second is this is a question given to you. And in this question, they asked a node analysis. So obviously you, this is a node VA. So you have got three different current to be flown here. 
So just use KCL at this node and just add these three currents. So current in this direction is fixed because this is 8 ampere. No other current will flow. Here it is VA by 4. Here it is VA minus 3 divided by 3. So that is what is written over here. And if you would find it, the value of VA is minus 12 volt. That's the answer. Next you have a 4A. This is the equivalent circuit. So obviously equivalent circuit, you must put a dot over. This is idle and here you get a ratio of E1, E2. V2 is output resistance, output voltage and in V1 is the input voltage. This is the reactance on this primary and this uh, secondary R2X2, primary R1X1, magnetizing reactance XM and RC is the core loss resistance. Working of single phase transformer with load condition, you can one can write by theory. Similarly, question number five is average in RMS current. Our average current is usually the how much the charge is transferred and RMS current is the, talks about the heat. And that's how you can you get the formula like this because of heating effect is I square R T and average charge I into T and it is calculated like this. <clears throat> Next is you have got a equation like this. So what's the average because these are the sinusoidal terms the average term is zero. So only 10 ampere is the average current and for RMS current you have to take this root square root of three and root divided by two. But this is the peak value you have to divide by root 2, the RMS quantity, divide by root 2, the RMS quantity, then you make a square of it, then square of it, then together you make a divide these three, you get a 27.386 ampere. Then question number 6, what is the total amount of charge? Charge is nothing but integration from time T0 to T1, whatever total current dt, i into dt is like q is equal to integration of t0 to t1 i times of dt that is what done once you get this integral you just do the integration and you get 43.33 coulomb another question is there where you have the value of z is given so just convert into the polar form the current is there in the wave form again convert into polar form multiply these two you get the voltage in polar form Remember that this, this value is the peak value here. So obviously this value is the peak value here and 75 is here the phase lead. As 30 degree is the phase lead over here, 75 is the phase lead over here. So this is the answer V is equal to this much, 100 root 2 sine of omega t plus 75. Another question is question number seven. Here we have resistance, capacitance, so convert the value into Xe. Well, obviously the value of Xe is coming 63.66 just write because the negative sign will come you get the value of Z so obviously here the value mod Z is 118.54 and here the current is V by Z so you get 1.687 and the current is over here that's current and the power factor is equals to the cos of this value since this is the current is leading so you get a power factor as uh, 0.84 0.8435 lead because current is see the z value is negative here capacitance is there the current is leading phase angle is obviously 32.48 degree vr just take the magnitude of the current with resistance you get the value of the voltage vr voltage across the resistor and similar the voltage across the capacitance you get the capacitance value and the current if you just take the magnitude it's enough 107.4 like that you can get the voltage across the capacitor and this way one can solve all the numerical questions from this theoretical question one can go through the book and find the answer hope you understand this numerical and this will help you to improve your knowledge